Wow. They seem to just sort of start spamming items at you at some point. The two towers say that they have two and four items waiting for me when I come back. One of which I'm pretty sure I just descended from and walked around down here, so I haven't had travel time. That's just real time, apparently. Wow. That, that's And even the other one I got from teleporting across, so yeah, like, they're both... There's six items waiting for me without any actual travel time. Maybe it is just based on a real... Is it based on real time? Like, if I come back and play the next day, does that make them get more stuff? Weird. Anyway, time to immediately get another tower at Howling Rock, probably. Oopsie. Howling Rock is one of the most remote sections of the Stone Sea, laying in the center of a region that is increasingly difficult to traverse. Near the center of this area is the final resting place of the Archon of Stone, Cairn. The Earthshakers work to draw energy from Cairn's remains, enhancing each of their number before sending them off to battle in other sections of the tiers. Two days, five hours. Let's go! I actually might go bankrupt over the course of this travel because of my, uh, ongoing and increasing the tower costs, so we better find some money. So what are we looking at around here? Pretty decently large area once again. Just like when we got to the other location with the uh, the leader of the organization, which didn't seem to matter. I'm just gonna keep grabbing the Azure list. Uh, nobody's given me a reason to stop. I mean, I've been told to stop, but nobody's actually paid attention to the fact that I'm grabbing them. I might need them if some if I uh, ever end up fighting Kiros or fighting uh, Voices of Narad or anyone else. Constant rumbles and moans, but looks carved from stone. Is huge and powerful even now. Can understand why tribe likes mystic called Cairn. Astounding. Imagine the dread of seeing that charge at you. Even helpless, he's terrifying. That's, yeah. It's a giant collapsed Goliath with crazy glowy stuff just spewing out of him in various directions. That's a hell of a visual. Alright. Let's get exploring. There's a few pickup related things here. Yep. Indigo. How am I doing on money? I still have 10, really. What are my upkeeps? So the main tower is nothing, so it's... Oh! It cost me way less than I thought it did, actually. I forgot. I knew it was X number of bronze. I forgot the fact that it's, it's uh, only once every multiple days. So it doesn't actually charge me that often for how little it charges me. Assuming it charges you a decent amount, it would have been really expensive. But uh, I moved to another location that has a tower and it's, uh, that also has a tower, so I'll just be having another chance to go there again. Ooh, Sigil of Life? Absolutely. That's good news. So now he just gets gloves that are equal... And they're not even equal in stats. Uh, it's exquisite, so it has one extra precision, plus three arm, uh, arm DPS, which doesn't really matter, but plus ten sigil of life means that now he has plus ten control life from both his weapon and from his, uh, gloves. That's great news. Throw that away. I should probably also, where was the, yeah, wits is his highest stat. Let's have him drink the, drink elixir of wits. Assuming it does exactly what I think it does. Let's just quick save just in case real quick. I'm pretty sure it's a permanent status upgrade. Sc uh, soldiers and scholars alike drink the elixir of wits to heighten their mental acuity and sense of observation. Scouts can ensure that they don't miss critical details on a mission, and academics uh, can capture the subtext of even the most enigmatic tomes of lore. Some imbibers have complained of senses sharpened beyond any desired capacity, but a few dozen outliers shouldn't cast a shadow over proven results. Boop. Drinky drinky, 21 wits. Now his wits have even grown higher. And I might go for... I might use finesse and might on my protagonist once both of them reach 19 or 20 or whatever when they start costing more. I don't know if I'll even use one on Beric. What's the last one? Right, might's not even one of them, it's vitality. So vi uh, Beric might get vitality. Am I even increasing his vitality? 16. Run his, run our way. At this point, I, he's so tanky, I should probably be increasing his vitality to get his health up, since it's so hard to take his health away now that increasing it even more would just make it harder to kill all around. And then he has auto heals when he gets low on health, so we just keep stacking all the reasons why he just won't die. So I'll probably use vitality on Beric. 
Let's just go ahead and put that there. Quickness and finesse. So probably finesse on you. Yeah. Quickness is not somebody that a lot of people specialize in. Not really. Really, just hit, he is the furthest into it. It gives you faster ability and spell cooldowns. So being able to use uh, more abilities more frequently isn't a bad idea when you're also the character who has so many different abilities. But it also might be equally decent to put on Lantry, because Lantry is the one who has... Uh, he's the one that's uh, supporting the party, so having heals recover more quickly may be beneficial for him. So I may want to keep quickness on him. But then put, uh, yeah, finesse on the main character and vitality on our tank. We'll, we'll get around to using these when the time arises. Still the plus 10 control life. That's nice. How high is it now? 94. <laughs> wow. Yeah, plus one wits from Silent Archive, plus one wits from Elixir of Wits, minus 15 dual magic skills from St Oh, jeez. We have minus 15 from the Edict of Stone, which means that it's it's even 15 higher than this normally, so we'd be at uh, 109 control life as soon as I leave this area. Oh, 104, because I also have plus 5 from resting at the thing recently. So many, th so, there's so much math happening here. Plus 20 from control life, plus 10, yeah, plus 20 from our talents, plus 10 from our quill, plus 10 from our mitts. Uh, I think I still have a talent to buy too, right? Yeah. Next time he levels up, which is pretty close, I'll probably be getting this, which may will take him to 30 control life, so it'll just keep stacking higher and higher, and it'll be just get all the more difficult for him to ever be take uh let an ally go down. And at some point I might start investing in the control vigor. He still has control vigor skills, right? Let's double check to make sure this thing's not timing based. Yeah, his uh his new potion's not at all mentioned here. It's probably listed down here. Yep, elixir of wits. So it's listed in the same area that a lot of the permanent things are listed, so it must be permanent then. I'll try to double check at the end of the episode just to be sure, but there's no list of a cooldown, so I th I'm confident to an extent. But he has three... Yeah, he has three Vigor skills, so it would not hurt to start putting points into uh, those three... The the 30 extra points of Vigor he can get from from his level up screen. It all comes down to whether or not I think certain other talents may or may not be worth more. That's uh, just something to sell. Keep it going. What are we coming up on? Just a way down? Yep, it's a dead end otherwise. I'm gonna skip on some of the description reading on some of these uh, interactions because it's just me ripping up more astroliths or climbing more ropes and I don't think the, the, the writing's gonna change since we saw it last. There's Octave. This, the sweaty, dirt-streaked thug waves you close, his voice low as he speaks. Thank you, boss. We made it to Howling Rock, but there's still one hitch. He nods his head toward the heavily fortified compound to the south. The Earthshakers are holed up snugger than a fox family in winter. Me and the gang can't find a single path in. I'm thinking they've collapsed the stone bridges connecting the canyon. He licks, his, he licks chapped, bloodless lips, eyes scanning the distance as he thinks. Finally, he sighs. I'm at a loss on this one, boss. Maybe you can spot something we missed? I've spotted something already. An incompetent lacking any skill to take up arms against Earthshakers. Wanna repeat that to my gang, chum? I don't think they heard you. I would only be- I would be only too pleased. If you two wanna go at it, by all means, I'll watch. <laughs> Loyalty of Barrack and Wrath of Scarlet Chorus. No, forget it. Misery will, will blood let my balls from now until the smiths of frost fall if I botch this. Unless, of course, the voices get us first. He runs his tongue over his, ri his ribbon teeth at the thought. I don't have time for squabbles. So, uh, so what have you seen that'll get us into the encampment, boss? Let's see. I'll talk to one of the guards on duty, see if I can trick them into letting me into the fort. Actually, no, let's ask what, the, what your scouts have seen. Best be aware, there's some unsettling activity. Both Pustule and Blood Marrow have seen the Earthshakers pitching their staves around the camp. I think they're gearing up for some big ritual. The Earthshakers are performing a, a ritual? To what purpose? Whatever it is, 
I can tell you it won't be to revitalize this realm. The Edict of Stone is hurting the Chorus far worse than the Disfavored. He spits a gob of Vagrant's Child at the ground. Maybe they found a way to heal Cairn and ensure the Edict never ends. Or maybe they found a way to fuck us even worse than uh, we already are. Let's see. Yeah, let's say we, we should assume whatever the Earthshakers are planning will benefit the disfavored, if not outright hurt the chorus. I agree. We gut them swift and rough. We breach the camp, take them out, and stomp out their pissing ritual before I can bite before I can bite us in the ass. I'll talk to one of the guards on duty, see if I can trick them into letting me into the fort. Worth a try, I guess, he shrugs. But I won't be waiting with bated breath. Just don't give us away, boss. Uh, not that you would. The Shakers must have a way to get in and out. It's not like they'd trap themselves in. Well, sure, but damned if I know what it is. What are you thinking, boss? No wonder Misery hasn't killed you off already? You're utterly wor you're utterly useless? Am I forgetting something about Misery? Or is that a mistake there? It almost seems like it, I'd be saying like I'd, I'd like I'm I'm wondering why he hasn't killed you off yet. Not no wonder. Anyway, uh, the Earth Mages. So it makes sense that if they crumpled the land, separating their fort from the surrounding bluffs, they could reform it again. Shaping and moving the land, like raising or lowering a drawbridge made of solid rock. He wavers uh, his head and thought, "Yeah, okay, that's actually really smart." But if they're moving rocks to to bridge the bluffs. How are we going to get across? I'll need a way to, ro to raise their rock bridge. If we can't get them to raise the bridge, I guess we'll have to do it ourselves. I'm no mage, but... I don't know. Maybe if we had one of those crystal staves? Shit knows, I've never seen an earth a shaker without one. You're right. Their staves appear to be fitted with shards of azurelith. Perhaps I, I could use one as a type of focal stone myself. If any, if any one of us could manage to cast an Earth spell, it'd be you, boss. I'll see what I can find out. And we leveled up, ooh, main character specifically. And really close to leveling up basically everyone. I would love to marathon at a, I would love to have like a marathon leveling session with everybody as far as their talents and stats go. So Sorry, let, I can't. let's see if I can wait it out a little bit. Let's check down here. Those, looks like this is the chorus camp. I'm just gonna... let's see, what, what, what is that over there? There's a few options around here. Palisade wall. This dense wall combined with a steep drop into the camp serves as an effective barrier. While not scalable, you do, no, you do notice a small hole between two of the logs. Let's peek through the hole, take a look through the hole. So I woke up in the middle of the night and this beast woman was standing over my bedroll. Before I could call out, she sprayed me. Covered me head to toe with some s foul smelling musk. I had to burn the uniform. That's quite a story. The earth shaker clears her throat. How are the Gulf Glow excavations coming along? Any word from ba um, Basilon? No, not even a missive, and they've yet to return. He sighs languidly. I doubt they're doing anything but taking their, uh, their fine time considering who's leading them. Aye. In his mind, I suppose there's nothing pressing about the ritual we're, we're to commence. He'll be lucky if I don't wring his gangly neck upon their return with the lodestones. Master Reddix only chose him because his staff is fitted with pure azuleth, but the fool's as likely to lose it as anything. And what are we going to do if someone uses it to get to the compound? Who, a beast? Or a chorus chanter? Don't be ridiculous. A shoe scuffs in the dirt. You asked. The conversation continues, but the voices fade into obscurity as the pair walk away from the wall. So somebody has a, a, a staff we can use to attack. Does that mean that if I went back to the previous location, I could attack their leader and take their staff and use that? Is that what we're going for here? I can tell Octave about that if I want. Or I could not. Let's look around. What's the deal with this interaction? Oh, Agilith. I'll take it. I'll keep taking those as I find them. It's 
just it's agonizing to see how close everyone is to leveling up with those little rings. The furthest one off in the entire group is uh kills in shadow, and even she's really close. Ooh. Light bronze boots exquisite. Not interesting at all. Crap. Oh, that's a bummer. What are my boots like right now? Yeah, this would be more armor at the cost of other effects, because I have uh I'm using light, uh, light armor, uh, leather boots right now. But I don't know if it's really worth, uh, the exchange. My sort of compromise with my main character, just because keeping him up seems really handy as the, as the, uh, lead character. Uh, I gave him heavy armor, but everything else is still leather. So his chest piece is a big source of armor, but everything else is chilling out to tr try to maintain some level of speed without completely gimping what's supposed to, what is functionally kind of like a ranged rogue-ish character with his attacks. And climb up here. This is all scouting at this point, just filling in the map and seeing what weird details we can find along the way. Is there something up here? More climbing. Am I getting skills? Oh, I'm not even getting skills for these. I stopped gaining... I'm not getting athletic skill from all these new new climbing times. Do Hello. On this? Thank you. Ah. Wait. Sigil of Bounding Bolts. This scroll contains a magical accent with, which allows a spell to bounce to many additional targets. Ooh. Is it stronger? Is that what we're going for here? I think that means that this is a stronger variation of the uh of the bounce spell. Yes. Now spells can bounce even more. That sounds fantastic. Let's test it. Uh, healing Wisp. You can almost do it. Let's see. So projectiles three and bounces two. Bounces four. That's the full party at that point. The option is just to... I need to reduce the cooldown or the strength, though. I can probably get away with changing the cooldown if it's going to bounce that many times between my party. That seems awfully effective. I assume I can't get away with it with, uh... Unravel Mines... False Pit. This is programmed to... Ooh! I think I can get away with it. No, it's plus 20. Crap. That's rank 2. So there's still a rank 3 that makes it even more effective. But yeah, I can't go for that. I need, uh... I need nine more lore with my main character before I can do that. So that's not happening. And not a lot of other bouncing spells in the party. That's, that's the kind of stuff that I could do with uh, Eb and Verse, more likely. Not Eb and Verse, Eb and Siren. Uh, they're full of, they have more uh, projectile abilities that could probably be used for bouncing. What's going on over here? The camp is typical of Stone Sea Explorers. Many travel from all corners of the tiers in search of unclaimed treasures from the now defunct Kingdom of Azure. What's going on over here? Forge upgrade. You've constructed a forge on one of your spires. The forge is a source of powerful weapons and armor. Mages from the forge bound will call uh, will be called to your forge where they can construct powerful items including rare artifacts. We're way ahead of them on that. Okay. I guess we're just going to head right back down then. That's a lot of map dedicated to what's ultimately just one one spellcasting pickup and I was I was sure we were heading towards some sort of like lore like some story rep, uh some story reveal or is an important interaction or something or even a hidden away camp like some character hidden hidden away I think that might be all I can do I think I think listening through that one wall was the only thing I could accomplish here so, is this not connected to the rest of their camp? I'm confused. Is there some great chasm down here I'm not seeing? Like, I see that there's a chasm around here, technically, although that, that seems pretty easy to cross, too. I just find it odd that, like, the, the, the disfavored seem to be right there. And, like, that's just, like, a series of ledges you could just hop down really easily. They're not even particularly tall. You could even climb back up afterwards. So may, I must not just be- I must not see the barrier yet they're talking about. Those, but then that suggests those characters are outside the whatever barrier stopping people from going through. Azurelith crystals are a resource for the Earthshaker's powers. 
Their essence, once harvested, may be used by the mages to bolster their abilities. Thank you. Add that to the pile. What's this? Fort entrance. There's a large gap between stone islands here, too far for anyone but a beastman to make the leap. Let's peer over the cliff. Far below you, a large boulder is suspended over an immense drop that tapers on off into complete darkness. So that, I think that large boulder must be the bridge they use then? Okay, interesting. So it seems like I might be able to talk to this guy from across here. Yeah, it comes up for nobody else. Is that truly such a great gap we couldn't jump across though? It's hard to say, but it doesn't seem that remarkable. I feel like a lot of characters could probably make this kind of jump, unless I'm really, really misjudging the depth, because it is presented in 2D and you can't rotate cameras, so it's hard to say. A Fade Binder of Tunon, here. What business have you at Howling Rock? Speak or be pelted with stone. Let's see. It's weird how the disfavored can just casually not destroy Karen when clearly like they're the leader of all of us specifically just sent out an edict to specifically kill Karen so it's weird how like we're just people are just getting away with not doing that I wish to speak with the ranking officer in command of this camp the filthy followers of Scarlet Corps such as yourself will never set foot in this camp be on your way rubble uh, excuse me I'm a fate burner of Tunon my word is law, you shit. Well, now they're definitely dying. Yep, that's that's not good for them. I think I have... Apparently the quest says I have to talk to Octave. Yep. I guess that's how I proceed. Because I don't see a way to interact past this point. Let's see. The Earthshakers manipulate the train uh, to both prohibit and allow access to their compound. I might be able to accomplish the same thing using a shard of pure azuleth. If any object could move mountains, it'd be that, yeah. Best we get our hands on it, by any means necessary, huh? I don't suppose we could just, you know, use a bridge. You know? Okay. Anything else I ought to know about? That's all I found. With a decisive nod, Oct Octave hacks a brackish gob of spit onto the ground. Let us know when you filch the shard from the Earth Shakers. I'll return to you once I've taken care of it. He nods, ab he nods absently, uh, fingers dripping to the, his, into his side pocket for a fresh dab of Vagrant's jaw. Just from a basic problem-solving standpoint, I feel like we could just take this bridge right here that's not stuck to the ground at all, and it's just a series of planks, and use all of our men here to just grab it, haul it over here, plop it over this ledge, and attack. Or just pe are people not particularly in any hurry to, you know, accomplish things today? <laughs> it seems like it wouldn't be that hard to solve this problem. It also sir, seems like we could go down this ledge or knock that wall down, like... This generally seems not accurate. Alright. Let's see. Yeah, we just need to get to Howling Rock. That's it. I got it. So, oops. At the moment, I seem to have no real interactions here. There's the entrance, Southern Agilith node. So I can't interact down here? I think I have to go attack the, uh, the one guy that has a staff somewhere. Which is annoying, because it kind of undoes all the negotiating I did, if, if it is, assuming it's the same character. Unless there's some other camp that I don't know about. Are the preparations done? They are. We set out shortly after nightfall. That gives us a fighting chance at avoiding the beasts, or anyone else who wants to get in our way. When will you return? Not until morning, I expect. So there's multiple conversations. Is there another one? You can't hear anything at the moment. It's worth a shot. The Earth Shakers mean to defend the final resting place of Karen to the death. Weapons, supplies, and resources have been brought in to sustain the soldiers at this camp. And there's no other objective, right? Just trial the Archons. I can report to Seven Toes for this thing about Harkin Bronze. Let's see, Grayson. Freed and captured the settlers, their pen stoned down. Right, Halfgate. We can return to Halfgate for that. That's about all that's going on here. I think I have to go off to another location to proceed. 
Oh, unless, unless Octave again. wants to has some reaction to the fact that somebody was just, uh, sent out. Might as well check. Not yet. All right, never mind. Sorry. Well, let's go for a jog then. We're off to see the wizard. Hey, Grayson. I don't suppose I could turn this quest and level up the remaining characters. That'd be nice. Fate Binder. Grayson cries happily at your approach. You have returned. I have heard the tales of your heroic deeds at Stone Down. Our scavenging crew is back safe and sound. Those beastmen, he says, shaking his head. They're horrible monsters. He spits and grinds it into the dirt of his shoe. This world would be a much better place if they weren't around. You may not like it, but they're here to stay. You'll have to learn to live with them. Grayson snorts derisively. No, I will not be happy until we don't have to deal with that filth anymore. They have been nothing but trouble, and conditions won't improve until we get rid of them. Human will fight beast woman, whole tribe, with what? Dulled sickle, slings, and stones? Humans are not ironclads, cannot stand against beast woman's killing claws and rending teeth. She sniffs, vo a voice gruff as she commands, Come, fight and die. Spoken like a monster. Convince me to trust you, then stab me while I turn your back. You're all the same. We're done here. I will thank you for what you've done, Fatebinder, but that is all you'll get from me. Oh, that's not very nice. Yay, the entire p Holy crap, the entire party leveled up. Well, there we go. Uh, next episode's probably gonna open with a whole lot of menus. <laughs> yeah, they just they really should learn to live with them, though. The, th the one perk of the Stone Sea is there's a lot of isolation around here. So if people just kept their areas, it'd be really easy not to encounter the people you don't like because they're all on the other sides of giant ravines on, across an incredibly long distance you have to walk travel on foot. Okay, so a lot of the... I'm going to go ahead and just level up now. A lot of the talents that I can go through are actually pretty natural choices at this point. So, for uh, Kills in Shadow, plus 14 unarmed damage going up from 11. The final natural weaponry augment. It's a passive upgrade. Lantry is getting plus 10 more on control life. Barrack is finally getting his second version of the phalanx stance. Now, it, it, it originally gave him plus 2 armor of Pierce Crush Slash. Now it's going to give him plus 4 armor, and it's going to make it so that people who hit him take 1 to 7 Pierce damage. So on top of doubling the the uh, bonus armor to an increasingly hilariously ridiculous number. Uh, he also is going to cause damage to anybody who hits him. It's kind of a big deal. And then finally... Uh, what did I... Oh yeah. I was going to give you Penetrating Shot. So Heart Shot is the skill I've had since the very, very beginning of the game. It does damage, and it causes bleed. And it can just do a bunch of damage in general. But this one's going to make it a piercing attack that hits everybody in a line. Is the armor penetration new? So it also gives it four armor penetration. So it gets four armor penetration. It does the normal bleed and damage and everything. Does it do more damage too? Same damage. So same damage, but does an armor penetration of four. And I believe it will... Yeah, enemies in the line take damage or left bleeding. So, so it'll go up, do a line shot for 15 meters and hit everybody in a straight line. Which seems like it could be kind of devastating. There we go. So now that's replacing my primary skill on that character. Let's see here. Yep, there it is now. Look at that. So I just throw a, this ridiculous straight line and it hits everybody in that line. That could be fun. Everything else is mo was mostly passives. I assume, yeah, Phalanx 2 was immediately equipped. Had to, I think I had to activate it though. Hopefully Phalanx 1 was activated before, or that'd be silly. And that takes him to the completely ridiculous armor total of 17, it looks like. These stats are ridiculous. Okay, so he has 21 slash defense, for example. That's where it's come to. Where's, a uh, blunt attack? Oh, there it is. Crush damage, it's just coming from Phalanx. Okay, so he gets he gets four to all of these, but his he is high pierce and slash resistant, kind of crappy crush resistance. But Phalanx helps with all of those, thankfully. Okay. Well, everyone in the party's getting scarier. Let's look into how to level up these stuff. These things like uh, with you, I've been upgrading 
the cooldowns. So we'll go further into that. With you, it's probably a good idea to upgrade Finesse again to get those nice critical hits. Let's go further into health for you, which will take me from 273 to 284. And then you should probably start going deeper into Might just for the pure damage. Did it go any higher this time? Not yet. It'll periodically go up and, and just raw damage also. And now the entire party's leveled up. Almost terrifyingly. How Look how high that power meter is, by the way. 1,075. The number's kind of meaningless, but it, they were nice to put, to put it in a meter so I have some concept of what the hell it's supposed to mean otherwise. Alright. Powerful party gets more powerful.